My name is Kara Illenfeld. Drew Fleming. I'm Joni Brittingham. Jason Cady. My name is Tariq Al Sabir. Dimitri Glavinsky. Michi Wianko. Eliza Bonet. Hannes Brown. Daniel Shepard. Aaron Siegel. Anya Sage Whitehurst. Pat Swoboda. Eric McKeever. Rachel Doring. Joshua Jeremiah. Jeff Hudgens. Rachel Duval. My name is Kamla Shankaram, and we are all the artists who work together to bring you Aquanet and Funyuns. <laughs> I directed the podcast Writer's Room. We met over video once a week throughout July 2020. In our first meeting, we discussed our initial story ideas. After that, we each wrote one act every week. We read them together and we all found details from each other's stories that we could reference in our own story. Being part of the writer's room experience was so wonderful because it was so supportive and, you know, I really enjoyed getting to hear everyone else's ideas as they developed, um, reading everybody's script, you know, um, and then getting that feedback as well for myself. Uh, you know, this all happened over, I think at the beginning of the summer, or the middle of the summer, and there weren't really a lot of opportunities for anything creative or exciting or paid, so thank you. Um, but it was amazing to know that once a week I was gonna have this figurative space to go to and be encouraged to create something, be playful, be tender, uh, you know, and have that be supported. The most exciting part of making this opera for me was getting to actually write an opera. I had never written an opera before, so learning that process and the jargon and structural elements uh, was really fun and eye-opening as a writer. And now when people ask me, what have I been up to this year? I say, oh, you know, nothing, just wrote an opera. And um, they don't believe me, so it'll be nice in December when this comes out and I can shove that in their face. Our workflow was one person doing their part and then handing it off to the next person and then handing it off and being able to be involved in multiple stages. I sort of got to see how these bodies of work, pun intended, came together. Uh, the most exciting part of making this opera for me was to know that it was going to be a podcast in podcast format. Um, so that gave me, of course, tons of liberty and permissions to lean into the audio experience, um, which led to me making some choices that were, I thought were really cool and, uh, and that I don't think I would have made if I was worrying about visual experience at all. There were a few most exciting things about this process, uh, but one of my favorites was receiving the libretto from um, Annie Sage Whitehurst, whom I had never met before, and falling in love with like every single word that was in there and every single character. That was an exciting moment for me, um, and allowed me to write the opera to write the music as quickly as I was required to, which was a little bit of an insane timeline. Working on this podcast opera was really a quick process and it was exciting in that way. I don't have a chance when I'm working quickly to stop and wonder whether something is perfect. I have to kind of move forward and make the best of it. And sometimes that just leads me to really interesting musical choices or ideas that I would not have come up with otherwise. For me, as a composer, this project was really exciting because it was a chance to make something that didn't have to be performed live, which means you can do things that are not actually possible to do live, such as having multiple overdubs from the different instruments, having the singers do these crazy shifts in vocal timbre from speaking to singing, and, and other things that were really fun to play around with. The other challenge was trying to create something that was hooky and cool that played with the conventions of both opera, which is a genre I'm not that familiar with and have never written for, and podcast music without really being cliche with either and uh, making something memorable in about 15 seconds. The process of creating it was certainly a challenging one. I've never uh, worked in an opera production where all the elements, uh, the characters and singers and such, were all separate from each other. It was a really amazing experience to be able to remotely record uh, the bass parts for this um, really fun opera uh, 
from my parents' uh, house, my childhood bedroom in Rhode Island, where I've been staying since this whole thing started. You know, we received this music. Um, we had a couple of weeks to, to work it up, and um, which was plenty of time, right? Because you're recording it, uh, it's not in some ways as uh, demanding as a live performance. Um, but it's a little more demanding in, other, in some ways because you, you want to get it, as I was saying before, you want to get it perfect, right? I think one of the things I particularly liked was being able to play with people again, which hasn't happened too much since this past March. So even though those people were not in the same room, um, I still was able to at least interact with them in, in a way that, you know, they've already played their parts and I'm just going to be reacting to them. Experiments in Opera contacted me and said they were doing a podcast opera and would I like to do it? And I had totally written off the possibility of being involved in anything with singing because of COVID. And so I was really grateful to hear that they're still doing some projects and that they were really being creative about how they're doing it. The process for making this piece was really interesting. Um, we got the scores and then got mp3 files of midi tracks for the music that we could rehearse to which was really necessary i don't think i could have done it without that uh because when you're working with new music it's just even if it's a midi it's really nice to have something to listen to to get an idea of what the composer was going for uh, the most exciting part of the opera was just kind of the challenges of piecing everything together remotely uh, and then, obviously, the day I got to go and record uh, a couple hours in the studio. It's always fun and welcome, especially in these times when we aren't really given the opportunity to perform very much. The most exciting part of this process, other than making music for the first time in a long time, was really getting to watch the, the technical magic happen. Um, I've never seen um, anything quite like that before. Recording remotely was odd, fun, challenging, um, because you were there by yourself and you didn't have your colleagues to uh, play off of. But I think we really captured some beautiful music and moments. One of the most exciting things about making it is that the art form of podcast opera doesn't have a lot of pre-established conventions. So from a sound design perspective, I found myself able to do things that I don't normally get to do like play around a lot more with abstraction and also the musicality of sounds. It's been really exciting to be a part of the process of making new music with living composers and creating vibrant art during a difficult time for a medium you are typically seeing opera being made. I really loved this project because the five composers have vastly different compositional styles and they create really different landscapes for your ears. So it was really fun getting to getting to, you know, dive in and out of those. I really enjoyed that. I'm very excited to have worked on uh, podcast opera, which is a medium I enjoy very much, uh, which I think will show that that uh, opera can be just as exciting without the benefit of a visual stimulus. One of the things that I really enjoy about working with experiments in opera is the way in which all of our projects tend to involve multiple artists working together in collaborative and unusual ways. Now that we have uh, done that with the pod this podcast, uh, Aquanet and Funyuns, we invite you as the listeners to join us on this wild ride of new opera.